Hello there. The topic of EQ has come up recently, and uh, somebody um, uh, on one of the uh, discussion pages about uh, Helix had mentioned that they didn't think it was really necessary, or I, I don't want to speak for them, but the impression that you could have gotten from their statement was that uh, EQ, if it's not something that you want to learn, uh, maybe some somebody can set your EQ up for you, and then you can simply um, uh, use that and not have to learn that skill. I find two challenges or problems with this. Number one is that your EQ needs are going to change. And so if somebody sets that up for you a month from now, you're going to need something. Uh, and number two, which is probably more important, is that um, of all of the tools in a um, audio engineer's toolbox, the most important one is EQ. Um, EQ and how to use it is not tremendously difficult to figure out in my experience. And as a matter of fact, I think that um, uh, it's, it's something that really every musician should understand. Now, that being said, uh, full disclosure, I play electric and acoustic guitar very often at the same time uh, with guitars that have both outputs. Um, some of you may know that and some of you are here because you follow my channel because you do that as well. Um, I'm going to focus on acoustic guitar today uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's easier, I think, to hear what's going on with the EQ changes in acoustic guitar. And number two, believe it or not, uh, in my regular presets that I use to play live, I never use any kind of EQ other than amp EQ on electric guitar. I have found a few amp models that work perfectly for me. I like the match, uh, the matchless. I like the new Elmsley. Um, I like the new GSG Grammatico a little bit. I like the Dr. Z, and I like the divided by 13 and the Baseman. But I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, I go right to matchless channel one. I don't need to EQ that because it gets me the sound that I want. Acoustic guitar is another story. No matter how right I get that, and I usually use an IR, I need to use EQ for that to get it just right. And that's another reason why I'm showing you this on acoustic guitar. So I don't like to make super long videos and I've already talked too much. So let's just get right into it, okay? So here I have uh, my HX Edit program open. I wanna point out what I have in here. It's not a whole lot. I have a looper. I only have the looper in here while I'm editing. And this is so that I can adjust my EQ while I hear my guitar being played, um, which I can't do. Uh, I can't do those two things at the same uh, time because I only have two hands. And then I have here uh, an, an impulse response. This is a wonderful way to take a piezo pickup and just make it sound like a mic'd up uh, acoustic guitar. And I talk about that in other places. Right here, I just have a dynamic ambience block because I find it livens up the sound. I will often not use that when I'm playing live because I'm playing in a room, it's coming out of a PA and you don't even hear the ambience because you're hearing the ambience of the room. But right now I just put it in there just to show you. You can put the EQ block either before or after uh, this impulse response. It really doesn't matter uh, in my experience. I will say this, if like me, you use EQ and then you also use dynamics like some compression, I like to do my EQ first and then compress the signal after that. Otherwise, it, it's just not as effective. So we're gonna go with our EQ block. There are several available here in our, um, in our HX Stomp uh, pro, uh, box. I don't use, or this is the same that you have in Helix, and I think most of these, if not all of these, are also in Podgo. Uh, I don't use any of them for acoustic guitar except parametric. Parametric is where you can take one band, in this case we're looking at the low band here, and you can boost it or cut it, you can change the focus, how wide or how narrow that is. So does it affect a lot of frequencies or just a few? And how much you get you gain. So here we're gonna adjust the actual frequency. Here we're gonna adjust how wide the band is. And here we're gonna adjust whether we're boosting or cutting and by how much. You have a band for the low, uh, low frequencies. You have one for the mid frequencies. They all behave the same. They just have different frequency ranges. And then for the high frequencies. If you're lost, stick with me because I'm just gonna start fiddling with knobs and you're gonna learn how to fiddle with knobs and get your tone to be just great. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually my low cut, uh, which you have a low cut and a high cut. Um, I don't use the high cut at all on acoustic guitar, but on low cut, 
I find myself uh, wanting to do that. So right here, here's my uh, piece of uh, my thing playing. Wow, I can make it sound really tinny, can't I? I don't want to do that but I want to get rid of all the low frequencies that get in the way of the bass and the drums and all that other stuff. So, I usually end up about here. You can go as high as this guy. About 200 some hertz. I usually will go somewhere around the low 100s. And that just gets rid of the super low end boom. I'm going to get rid of more boom with the low frequency because I, I, I want the boom maybe if I'm playing solo acoustic, but if I'm playing with a group, I don't want so much because it really is getting in the way of things. And if you record a big boomy acoustic guitar sound and then play it back later on like a car stereo, you'll find out it sounds pretty bad sometimes. So what we're going to do is now we're going to mess with the low frequency. Uh, what I do with these three knobs the low frequencies where in a moment we're going to decide what frequency sounds the worst so that we can cut it. The Q, which is the bandwidth, uh, here's, a, here's a tip. Don't touch it. 0 0.7 works for me 90% of the time. I almost never have to change that. That's a great default number. Thank you, Line 6, for providing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this sound really bad by turning up the gain, not all the way, but a good amount, and I'm going to sweep the frequencies. I'm literally just going to turn this knob until I find it sounds absolutely horrible. Listen to this. Ooh, that's bad. Then I'm going to cut it. I cut it by about 3 dB. But you see what I did there? I boosted this frequency. Uh, uh, I boosted the low gain, and then I, I swept the frequency uh, until I found something that sounded just absolutely atrocious. And that's how I found what was giving me problems. You're probably asking, why don't you just boost frequencies to make it sound better? That often inter, uh, introduces a lot of extra distortion and some, frequent, uh, some uh, content into the signal that actually will make it sound worse than doing it this way. Now we're going to do the mid gain. On an acoustic guitar, we've got a very annoying frequency, and um, I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, but I always know what it is because I always end up at the same number. So let's boost this frequency, and let's just hit the play button. I know, uh, I know that 2.7 is, is the one that just hurts my ears coming out of a piezo guitar. And you might not have heard it because it's coming through uh, studio monitors into my little uh, lavalier mic. But uh, trust me, that is a frequency that just, at least in my case, it always hurts. So now I'm going to cut that one by about 3 dB. So one more thing I'm going to do with high gain. I told you not to, to boost. High gain is a place where I do sometimes boost. Sometimes there's some high frequency content right around 8K or above that I think that the acoustic guitar can carry that uh, none of the other instruments are, are getting affected by. And it can give you a little bit of zing. So let's listen to that a moment. Now you'll notice that I boosted this a little. I don't like, I like my little, my little cuts, only about three, three dB, sometimes only two. Uh, I like to boost this one about six. And I find that right there in the eight to nine region uh, is where it usually sounds the best. Uh, now I want you to hear what we've done. So here's the sound without EQ. And here it is with EQ. pretty simple. Uh, again, I don't do this a lot on electric guitars because I have found the models that work great for me in terms of amps and speakers, and I find that I'm able to use the tone controls on the amp and the microphone placement controls, especially with the new cabinets that came out this year. 
uh, I find that they uh, do everything I need to get my electric guitar sound. Final note, don't do a lot of this, especially on electric guitar, if you have a good sound man, because he's probably, or she, is probably going to do all of this for you anyway. Uh, so uh, a lot of us play in places where we don't have a good sound person and we end up having to deal with our tone ourselves. Learn to use EQ. If you didn't like my video, go find another one because there's probably other ones out there that are just as good, probably better. Thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a great day. Be blessed.